Hi, thanks for joining another video. Today I want to go over a different type of alternative fuel vehicle. Yep, we're talking about hydrogen. Hydrogen fuel cell vehicles are technically electric vehicles. They feature electric motors and their fuel can be generated using only electricity and water. This means that it's possible to fuel these cars with 100% renewable fuel, and that's great. If you're like me and you've never driven a hydrogen car, we'll be going over the basics of them. To help me with this, I've got a 2017 Toyota Mirai. This car features a 312 mile range, gets 66 miles per gallon equivalent, and can do zero to 60 in nine seconds. This car, when it was new, cost about $57,000, but a new 2021 Mirai costs around $49,500 now, so they've come down in price a bit. This video isn't specifically about the Mirai, but it'll help me demonstrate some of the interesting things about hydrogen cars. The U.S. Department of Energy defines a fuel cell as an electrochemical device that uses hydrogen and oxygen from the air to produce electricity, with water and heat as its byproducts. They also state that hydrogen can be sourced from fossil fuels and can be produced by water electrolysis. Fuel cells have benefits in that they are quiet, have low to zero emissions, are efficient, and scalable to fit any power need. Some disadvantages are that they are expensive to manufacture and hydrogen is expensive to produce. Several key components make a hydrogen fuel cell electric car. They include a fuel cell stack, fuel filler, fuel tank, battery, battery pack, DC-DC converter, electric traction motor, power electronics controller, thermal system, and transmission. Hydrogen cars actually have more in common with a battery electric car rather than an internal combustion car. Contrary to popular belief, this car does not burn the hydrogen fuel. The drivetrain portion of this car works very similar to an electric car. The electric motor is connected up to the power electronic controller and a smaller lithium ion battery. The lithium ion battery is used for excess hydrogen energy storage as well as storing energy from regenerative braking. The power electronics controller is also connected to the fuel cell, which is where all of the magic happens. Oxygen from the outside of the car is brought into the cell on one side and hydrogen from the fuel cell tank comes in on the other. The process of the hydrogen passing through a membrane and combining with the oxygen is what ends up creating the energy the motor needs to move the car. It's incredibly fascinating how this all works. Once hydrogen combines with the oxygen, you get water, which then gets expelled from the car. So like a battery electric car, hydrogen cars don't produce tailpipe emissions, sort of. You see this H2O button here? Bet you've never seen one of those on a car before. This is actually to expel water from the car. As a car spends its fuel, the hydrogen combines with oxygen, which then gives us water. The Mirai will automatically purge water from the car, but this button allows you to do it manually. My cup of water is almost ready. Hydrogen cars are weird, but make use of it, right? Cheers. Yeah, just kidding, I'm not drinking this. I don't know where there's cars been. <laughs> hydrogen fuel cell electric cars are available in select markets like California where hydrogen fuel stations are available. In mid-2020, there were 43 open hydrogen stations in the U.S., with most being in California, one in Hawaii and 12 planned for northeastern states. Looking specifically at California, there are a few scattered around L.A. and San Francisco that are open. However, some are currently closed, pending permit, or opening soon. Some locations on the map have been proposed to install a hydrogen fueling station. There is also hydrogen infrastructure developing for fleet vehicles and buses. Speaking of this growing infrastructure, I think it's time that we try it out. This is a hydrogen fueling station. It looks pretty similar to a regular gas pump. You'll notice on the front here that there are two nozzles. Well, this one's missing. This one says H35 and this one says H70. These dispense the same fuel but at different pressures. So if you hook up the H35 to this Mirai, it only get about half a tank since it's half the pressure. For this car to get full fill up, you'll have to use the H70. You might also notice that it's not filling in gallons but actually in kilograms. Hydrogen fuel is measured by its mass rather than by its volume, so that's just kind of interesting. Specifically for the Mirai, Toyota gives you three years of free fueling, so that's a nice perk. According to Toyota, it takes between 5 and 10 minutes to fill up the car. These pumps also use an infrared connection in the nozzle to communicate with the car. One really important thing to note is that when hydrogen is being pumped, it's very cold, so apparently these handles can freeze to the car, especially in more humid climates. 
If that happens, you're just supposed to wait for it to defrost and then you can remove it. Okay, let's try fueling it. Okay, it's fueling. This thing is super cold too. That's interesting. So we're not that empty, we're almost full, but still you can see that the price is going up pretty high. And when it's done filling up, it'll stop on its own. and replace nozzle. Let's see, I'm not sure how to unclick this release switch. Oh. Uh, how do I replace this? <laughs> um, it's like, I can't actually put it back in there. I can't really twist it around. When I found it, it was kind of just hanging on here. So there are two stations I fueled up at, and this one I did a little bit, but now it actually says that the dispenser is unavailable. So it must have ran out of, of hydrogen already. This footage is when I fueled up the first time. I don't remember the exact mileage I arrived at this fueling station with. It was low, but not completely empty. This was one of the few hydrogen stations that was online, so a line of other Mirai started lining up behind me. I guess I'll just fill it up. The cost to fuel up was high. It finally stopped at $47.33. is going up a lot. So I just finished fueling up. The process was pretty quick and the handle didn't freeze. However, it was really expensive. It was $47 for about 110 miles of range. Some of the benefits are that fuel cell vehicles emit no tailpipe greenhouse gases except for heat and water. It is quick to fuel up your car, less than 10 minutes, and you get a lot of mileage out of these vehicles. In certain models, regenerative braking is used to put energy back into the battery. The disadvantages are that producing hydrogen for fuel cell vehicles can generate greenhouse gases depending on how it's produced. There's very little naturally occurring pure hydrogen on Earth. The cost of a hydrogen car is expensive. When fueling up the vehicle, the handle may momentarily get stuck, especially in humid areas. Hydrogen must be compressed in high pressure tanks, which makes it very costly. The other problem is that hydrogen is difficult to store since it can leak. Energy is also used in transporting hydrogen and compressing it. Lastly, the current infrastructure is too early to support the widespread adoption of fuel cell vehicles. As I mentioned before, I didn't do a full review of the Toyota Mirai, but if you're curious about this vehicle, here's a quick and brief overview. It's incredibly similar to the Toyota Prius with its interface and functions. The one I have today is a 2017, which can travel over 300 miles on a full tank, and it has an AC synchronous electric motor. It has 12.8 cubic feet of trunk space. It comes standard with several driver assistance features, including things like adaptive cruise control, front and rear parking sensors, and blind spot warning. A 2021 Toyota Mirai will start at $49,500. The 2021 Mirai comes with complimentary fuel for three years if you lease or six years if you purchase it. Every new Mirai comes with an eight-year, 100,000-mile fuel cell electric vehicle warranty and a 10-year, 15,000-mile hybrid battery warranty. One neat feature I found about this car is that it can be equipped with a DC charging port under the hood. If you watch some of my other EV videos, you might recognize that as a Chatamo port. This isn't used to charge the car, but rather to power your house in the event of a blackout. I didn't see any numbers on the Toyota's website for the amount of energy the car has stored when full, but it did say the car would output up to 9 kilowatts. 
Other than the Toyota Mirai, there are also other hydrogen vehicles like the Hyundai Nexo and the Honda Clarity. My experience driving the car wasn't the greatest, more so because almost all the hydrogen stations were closed because of maintenance or the fuel station was empty. There are not that many stations around, so if more than half are limited or closed, that's annoying. The process to fuel is fine and it's quick, but the price to fuel is very expensive if your free fueling for owning or leasing a hydrogen car is expired. You get a good amount of range in these vehicles, but that is limited if you plan on traveling out of state where hydrogen stations do not exist. I'm curious to know from current hydrogen vehicle owners and their experience. As for me, I'll continue to advocate for battery electric vehicles. Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow me on social media at Kai's EV and Kai's Tesla. Kai's my dog. And check out my website for more EV resources at kaizev.com. That's all for now and happy charging.